In Lepidong, Myanmar, a great land grab is underway. After decades of dictatorship, the country is opening up to foreign investment. For a joint venture between a Chinese mining firm, Wanbao, and a military-owned company, authorities here have cleared more than 31 hectares of land. The copper project has uprooted hundreds of farmers from their ancestral villages. With no other way to earn a living, some displaced farmers here turn over the remains of a previous mining project for handfuls of copper dust. But others are prepared to do whatever it takes to avoid a future that looks like this. Tui Tui Win was an ordinary farmer until a large tract of her family's land was taken to make way for the copper mine. She became an activist. When Wan Bao employees started clearing more of her family's land for the mine this year, Tui Tui Win tried to stop them. In 2012, widespread anger at the mine swelled into a protest movement that attracted student leaders and Buddhist monks. It remained peaceful, but authorities did not. That November, police attacked protesters with white phosphorus grenades, an illegal weapon that hospitalized more than 100 monks. Utake <laughs> Khanyarna joined the protest to stop the destruction of sacred Buddhist sites. He was seated in prayer when the grenades struck. Nyarna insists the order for the crackdown came from the top of Myanmar's government. A commission was formed to investigate the Lepidong violence, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, the democracy activist who spent 15 years under house arrest for taking on the military. But her commission failed to hold any officials responsible for the attacks on protesters, prompting locals to heckle the parliamentarian on her last visit. In Myanmar, there's no rule of law. Not, and military is above the law. Above the law. They never abide. We have so many land grabbing cases. Tain Tan U is a lawyer in Mandalay who works on behalf of the farmers. He says the military continues to operate with impunity, dismissing talk of democracy in Myanmar. And when you say that people are not being compensated for their lands... Yes. Not enough money. Uh, they must pay the market value of the land. They never pay enough compensation money. After 21 years behind bars, Tain Tan U refuses to keep quiet. Because this is our duty to abolish, to eradicate the military government. If he proceeds, we have no future. We are living in the darkness. Arrest and threats have not silenced Tui Tui Win and farmers like her either. As the mine continues its expansion, she meets with other protest leaders in the nearby village of Kangoa. Most of these farmers have held onto their land, but they face a more insidious threat, a military-owned factory that makes acid for the copper mine. They say their air, water, and crops are poison, causing serious and sometimes deadly health problems. Nyonyo Win's daughter is sick with an illness whose name she doesn't know. Four-year-old Yunwati U was blind at birth. She can't speak, walk, or sit on her own. 
Nyonyo Wen's newborn son looks healthy, but she fears there will be future complications. Given all the pollution here, do you want to move from this place? After several attempts, our translator, Sanong, managed to arrange an interview with officers from Wanbao, the Chinese mining company. The, the government uh, just uh, seized the land in 2010. Every villagers come to the, the government's office to collect the composition. Mm -hmm. Happily, everyone is happy. But I've spoken with some farmers who said they would not accept the government's money and that bulldozers came to their home in the middle of the night, along with armed men, and forced no, them out. It's a rumor. No. So these people are not telling the truth? No, it's, it's not the truth. There is an acid factory that is owned by the military holding company nearby. No, a lot of residents are complaining about the pollution there, and some are saying they have severe health complications. For the health issue, you can check with the Ministry of the House. You can, you can ask them if this rumor is true or not. Back at our hotel later that night, special branch police agents showed up to question us about our activities in Lepidon. They were asking about what we've been up to, who we've been talking to, where we've been today, and you know we were trying to meet with these guys anyway. So we took advantage of the encounter to set up an appointment with the police chief first thing in tomorrow morning. At first, he tried to scare us off. Well, we feel very secure and we're in the best hands here. No problems. May we ask you some questions about uh, the Let Padong controversy? White phosphorus is illegal under international law and it was used against civilians, monks in this case. You know that even in situations of war, the use of white phosphorus is considered a war crime. And you are saying that it can be deployed against peaceful protesters? Several thousand farmers have been resettled by the government since the joint venture with the Chinese mining company started. The next day, we drove to one of the largest camps to check out the living conditions. This time, we had company. Two guys have been following us since we got to Lepidong on motorbikes. We're just going to go see what their business is. Are you following us? No, no, no. He said no. No, we keep seeing you behind the car, and then we stopped here, and then you stopped here. So we were just curious. If we went further down the road and we stopped again and you stopped, that would be really suspicious. So this is probably the last time we're going to see each other. So now we lost our special branch tails and we have an immigration officer. This one? Yeah. A journalist. Okay. Yeah. It's all fun and games for us. We have press visas, we're international journalists, but it's a lot tougher for local journalists. You can only imagine what they have to put up with dealing with this kind of harassment. Cute Ni raised wheat and chickpeas on a five-acre farm until the day a government truck arrived and brought him here. The old man's son, Mo Shui, now works for Wanbao as a security guard. Toward the end of our interview, Mo Shui admits that depression and alcoholism are common in the camps, and the reason for his beat-up appearance. Back in the village, Tui Tui Win says she won't be going anywhere. Hello, 
ပိုင်းစရာရတာပဲသိတာဘဝပြတ်တော်လာလို့သူမတိလိုက်တာအဲ့လို့လူတွေကြည့်ပဲ